Well, howdy folks and welcome back to Pecan Ranch. Today, um, I want to do a little bit of a review on a tagging system and also um, show how it's used. How you do a, an ear tagging system, uh, the Ytex tagging system, and kind of explain why it's my personal favorite. Um, and we will get into that review here in a minute. We get some hungry piggies over here whining at us. So we're gonna we're gonna get some feed loaded up so that we can distract them. These four pigs, they gotta get tagged. So we'll see you folks here in a minute. All right, folks. So um, as actually you saw on the in the intro we have we got another rabbit out and um, <laughs> I can't <sighs> some of them they just they just get out and I can't get keep them in uh, anyways that's uh, another topic for another day I know we're we're planning on getting rid of the rabbit soon but so um, I want to begin by kind of going over and reviewing uh, given kind of my thoughts on it, and then I can show you folks this thing in action. So we have right here the Ytex applicator tool. So this is the Ytex applicator plus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and really, there's no needle on it, and it's constructed of a uh, pretty decent plastic. It's made in the USA. It's uh, it, it seems like it feels like a pretty solid product. Um, I like this system and uh, one of the reasons why I like it is there's no needle on it. So we have our tags here um, and you can see it's our tag that has the the needle point um, which is really nice. Um, the, the, the benefit to me of that is you don't have a applicator that gets dull over time or needs to really needs to be sanitized and clean as long as you keep your tags in a clean space or something like that, you don't really have to worry too much about this, how sanitary the, the applicator is. Obviously, you want to keep it relatively clean, but you really don't have to worry about how sharp the applicator's needle remains. Um, so all you have is you, it's a two-piece um, tag system. You have one end of the tag, and then you have your, uh, your paired end with it. So the way it would work, is you take the needle in here and you're gonna stick it in there like such and then you have uh, the other end of your tag oops the other end of your tag here that would go in like such um, and it's got a little clip that kind of holds it there in place and I'll show you that um, in a minute, actually here in a second, let me get one loaded up that's the right number uh, for the one that we're about to do. Here, you take the camera. Okay. Alright, so we have number eight and number eight. So I'll just take this and then slide it in like such. So this gets held in um, right in here. You just slide it in place and this little clip right here just holds it in just enough. Once you get it clipped in the pig, it'll slip right out um, and you don't have to worry about trying to release it whenever you've got, um, got it clipped in the pig's ear. And then you just punch down and it clips the two together, uh, pierces the pig's ear. Um, this is loaded up for number eight um, and we will be, we'll be tagging them here in a minute. So um, one tip that I will say is with uh, your number nines uh, and number sixes, just get a paint marker and underline the, um, just underline the number. Now you may know which pig is number nine and which pig is number six, but your processor may not. Um, in our case, it shouldn't be that big of a deal because uh, the number six and number nine are going to the processor at separate dates. So they shouldn't have too much confusion if I've got, um, uh, you know, if, if say number six is getting um, inspection, uh, getting state inspected processed 
for uh, individual cut sales or custom cut for whole pig, half pig, vice versa with number six or number nine. But since they're going in separate units, they're gonna see, okay, Pecan Ranch um, has number six slotted for an inspection process um, and number nine has, you know, whatever. But it's just a, a, a good idea. Not all tags are gonna be underlined like that. The, uh, um, <clears throat> the Y-Tex doesn't. Um, however, um, it's, still, it's still a great tagging system. That's the only honest flaw that I've seen is that their number nines and their number sixes um, don't have a, a good indicator as to which one is which. It's, it, it's, it's relatively easy to determine the difference. If you have a number six and a number nine, with you, you can kind of tell how it's supposed to be uh, oriented, but you don't want the processor um, having to deal with that, and you don't want to get your numbers mixed up. If you know they say they send you back your information and say number six was uh, weighed X amount, number nine weighed X amount, you don't want your data to be too messed up because you may be running different uh, diets on your different pigs in your different groups, and maybe trying to plan. Um, plan a few things to try and figure out, okay, um, how, how, what's our growth rate on individual pigs um, based off of what diet we're kind of feeding them. And if you get your numbers wrong, that can skew your data. Um, so before we go out there and get them tagged up and show you all how to do it, let me address the issue as to why you would tag your pigs um, or any of your livestock for that matter. So the reason why you would tag them is mostly for ease of uh, communication with your processor. So your processor knows which pig you're talking about. And you may say to yourself, well, Matt, I, uh, you know, I know what my pigs look like. I know I can tell them apart without tags. And that's the case for me. I can tell apart every single one of my pigs without tags. I don't need to, I don't need to have a tag on them to know who they are um, about what size they are uh, ranging in and all that stuff and I know they're all named they all have names but if I take a set of pigs to the processor and I tell them well you know I want maple to be um, a she's she's going to a, a customer and she'll be a whole pig uh, custom cut and uh, and spot butt is going to be uh, uh, state inspected uh, packaged for individual cut sales. Well, they're not, they don't know who spot butt is. They'll probably guess because he's the one with the one spot on his butt. But anyhow, um, they, they, don't, they don't know that. And it's way more difficult to, they're not going to, you, they're, they're, your processor, I don't care how small town mom and pop it is, is going to be extremely reluctant to just base your cuts and everything off of a description of the pig based off of its markings, its spots or whatever it has on it. So you're mostly tagging them for the processor. Even if you don't need them to be tagged on the farm uh, to, to know what, to know who's who. And this is why uh, the pigs are in, on my farm tagged way later. And I don't tag them immediately. There's a couple of reasons why I don't tag them right away. One, if you tag them pretty early on in the process, there's a higher propensity for them to get the tag ripped out of their ear uh, because you know pigs mess around, they fight around, and they might get snagged or grabbed by another pig and pulled out. So we don't want that. That would hurt the pig, and then they have to go through the process of retagging all over again. So we wait till um, about a month to two months at the tops before butcher date because this means that it's one thing that I just don't have to do, uh, worry about anymore. It, really, you could do it, I could do it a day before butcher date, but really, I'm just looking to get this knocked out and out of the way. It's not that big of a process for me. Um, <clears throat> well, I've already tagged all of, the, uh, all of the pigs in the back pasture. And another reason why we wait is when they are smaller, um, one, they're usually a whole lot more hyper and rambunctious. They're like puppies and they just don't want to sit still for you. Um, so that's, that's an issue. Um, and then two, they don't quite trust you as much. It takes a little while to grow that trust and you can handle the pigs a whole lot easier after you've had them for a whole lot longer. Because you may be thinking to yourself, well, do I really want to be 
trying to handle a 200 plus pound pig to put ear tags on. Well, it depends on your operation, and in my case, my 200 pound pigs are way more docile now than when they were when they were 50 pound pigs. Now these pigs are weighing in probably approximately about 80, 90 pounds or so. Um, so they're not quite as big, they're at that big level. But um, we've had, it's springtime, and we've just had a ton of rain left and right. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get what I can done when I can, and I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of the game. So <clears throat> these pigs are getting tagged a little earlier than they really ought, uh, need to be. Um, but one of the reasons why I selected these specific tags is they're not the giant ear tags. They're a lot smaller and they don't get they don't get hung up on things and you'll see it once it's on the pig how low profile it is and uh, basically how minimally invasive it is to their lives <laughs> and uh, i know the pigs in the back half of them didn't even make a noise whenever i um, tagged them they're used to me messing with their ears um, you know uh, getting ticks out of their ears or rubbing uh, um, uh, with a cloth i'll rub uh, the uh, uh, bug spray onto their ears so that way it repels the, the ticks and stuff. So they're used to me handling them and so it didn't really bother them. These pigs might squeal a little bit just because they're mouthy. Um, these particular pigs have something to say about everything. It probably isn't gonna hurt them as much as surprise them. And honestly, they'll be very distracted by the food. That's why I've got him with me as an assistant. It's useful to have two people, but also in this particular instance, I need a cameraman. So. You can do it by yourself if you have pigs that you can handle, which is why I stress so much so frequently that you want to be as nice to your animals as possible and you want to build a relationship with them so that way they like you. The reason why you want them to like you is because they sometimes need to be handled, whether it be tagging or medical treatment for some kind. They got a wound that needs sprayed. They got to be sprayed down to uh, prevent uh, uh, ticks and stuff from getting on them to make their lives better. They need to trust you and like you. And the best way to do that is spend every single day with them. You got to go out every day, even if you have a good automated feed, feeding system, give them a treat. Um, so like if you're feeding them uh, on, a, on a big feeder like I've got in the back pasture, I like to come out, take a couple of scoops of sweet feed with me so that way they you know, see me coming to them as treat time. Uh, same with these little pigs. Uh, these little pigs, however, uh, I haven't put a big pig feeder in there for them, so I just feed them every single day. And so to me, uh, to them, they see me as, you know, the dinner bell, they see feed time. And so, and then we handle them, we pet them, we, uh, they, they trust us. And because of that, it makes it easier to do things like this. And I know I've mentioned it before in earlier videos, but this is an example of why it's important that your pigs or livestock of any kind like you and trust you. So um, without further ado, we're gonna get over to it, get them some feed. To distract them and it's also feeding time and um, get them tagged and ready to go so see you folks in a second all right whole ready it is awfully muddy and mucky out here uh, come on Peter. back it up what? back it up hey, hey. it has been raining for basically two weeks straight and so there are certain areas in the pastures and paddocks that have been getting particularly muddy. This is why having um, having good boots is a very important part of your life. Goodness, you act like you don't have any food ever. Okay, so what I wanna do is I don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to have a specific number with a specific pig in mind, but I do have one. And so I want Oreo to be number eight. So while they're eating, I'm gonna pet them so that way they are aware and they don't get suddenly startled whenever I go to touch their ear. You want to find a good spot, relatively low in the ear, 
And then... Number eight. Give it a squeeze. Can you see? It's pretty low profile. Um, it doesn't stick out too much. Doesn't get hung on things. And you just want to make sure that you get it low enough down in the ear. Don't want it on the tip because you don't want it falling out and you don't want it snagging on stuff. These particular pigs have thicker, fatter ears than my pigs in the back and they have floppy ears. So they're, uh, they've got a whole lot more meat to get onto. Um, and so these ones are actually easier to locate uh, a good spot on them. So I'm gonna do number nine is gonna be Penella Pig. And she is right here, I think, yeah. Conveniently repositioned herself. And I just accidentally put number nine, okay, <laughs> look at that. So we get it loaded up, the needle end on the needle end. And then we slide this in, making sure that the uh, flat piece goes between this little clip here. And I'm just gonna start petting her, petting her ear so that way she's aware of what's going on, sort of. <coughs> Give her a little clip. And now, when you do this, you wanna ensure that you wanna do it quickly and in one fell swoop. You don't wanna be re-sticking the pig and making it uncomfortable for them. So even though they're gonna make a noise or move on you, you want to be quick about squeezing all the way. One thing I like about this is it does not require a lot of pressure, a lot of effort, and a lot of force to get them clipped. So um, it's a relatively quick, quick thing. Um, so I'm thinking that Haas is gonna be our number 10 here. Um, and here we have number 10. And Haas has just positioned us. We're gonna go for the difficult pig. Hoss is usually a pain, but when he's eating, he's usually not as, he's usually pretty distracted. So, hey there, Hoss. That's why I wanted Number to 10. get in, get there quick. Um, Cause Hoss is, uh, Hoss is the one that uh, tends to be the most rowdy whenever you handle him. There's nothing in that bucket, Penelope Pig. All right, now Kevin P. Bacon is the last one. He, uh, he usually will get awfully surprised when you come up on him, so you want to gently come in and pet him. How you doing, buddy? How you doing, buddy? Whoa! There you go. <laughs> oh, I know. Let me make sure it's not tickling your ear too much. Okay, I'm oh. sorry, buddy. All right. So there you have it. Um, it's definitely going to be way easier. It's way easier when they're feeding um, than trying to convince them otherwise. So it's 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 minimally invasive. It's pretty low profile here, um, and like I said, these particular pigs, they're um, they're awfully mouthy and very noisy. So. They honestly made more noise than it hurt them. They're going on about the rest of their life, the rest of their day, um, like nothing's really happened. They might shake their ears a little bit, um, and you might need to check on the tag, because that particular tag, the way it goes in, it, the inside part could be tickling them on their ear, and you don't want it to be doing that. It might be getting some of the, ear, uh, the hairs. I'm um, gonna swap out buckets for me, and um, I'll just put this in my back pocket. So you don't want it tickling them uh, because then they're gonna not only be uncomfortable and be bothered, but they're going to uh, they're gonna be shaking their ears too much. And shaking their ears all the time could potentially um, uh, could potentially irritate that tag, and even potentially um, maybe maybe shaking around too much. And then couple that with them fighting it with each other. The pigs like to fight with each other sometimes, especially around food. They might bite their ears and you just don't want it to have, you want it to have the best success and chances of remaining tagged. Now, another thing you need to do with your tagging system, even if you don't have a ton of pigs and you can just keep track in your head, write it down somewhere. Keep a list of who's who 
um, because what what will help you even if you're not tracking the data now between weights and all of that stuff um, you will want to track it eventually later so even if you're not using the data keep the data record the data uh, the number for which pig it is um, what their <clears throat> what their butcher weight was uh, what their you know what their live weight was when they went to butcher their hanging weight their finished cut weight log all of those even if you have no intentions of using that information right now you want you may want it later so that's where it becomes beneficial to have a tagging system as that helps you just kind of track data um, and um, and like I said you'll need it for your processor now if you have a larger operation you have 10 20 um, you know whether it be 10 pigs you got 20 pigs 30 pigs 40 pigs 100 pigs whenever you're doing it make sure you log which number is with which group which paddock what area um, and this information may come uh, may become helpful in the future because let's say you have uh, three pigs out of your 10 pigs in one particular group say you run 30 pigs and you have them a rotational grazing system and you have uh, them separated into three groups of 10 pigs and um, three of those pigs get sick for some reason well you want to track that so you'll know okay numbers you know four five and six were sick and they were in paddock two that may not be relevant because it may not have been something in paddock two. It may have just been something that one of the pigs got sick and they were near each other. So you'll want to keep that track and go, okay, well I had three pigs get sick in paddock two and now they're better. We don't know what it was. And then you rotate through again and then the next group, another group of pigs, a couple of pigs get sick and you notice, hey, this happened when they're in paddock two. So maybe there's something in paddock two that is, um, that is a problem. So that, that's why, keeping just in in general keeping data keeping logs will help you out in the future because you may not need the info now but you'll find it useful later on in the future um, so I really like the uh, Ytex uh, tagging system we haven't tagged our cattle um, primarily because it's really easy to tell the two apart and neither of them are going to the processor so we don't need to tag them um, and we may never tag cattle if we never really raise a large quantity of them. Uh, the tagging systems are beneficial uh, in some cases in large scale operations. You may need it to differentiate between your pigs. I know who each pig is without a tag. However, um, you may not, or you may have pigs that are really hard to tell apart. There are some pigs that, you know, they, they just don't have any unique markings on them and you can't tell who's who. Um, so you may need that tagging system just to keep track of who's who and that'll help you out um, a, as well because then you can also keep keep tabs and see okay well this particular pig is gaining weight at x rate this particular pig is not gaining as much weight why is this pig not gaining as much weight so you can start watching that pig and notice its behaviors is the pig sick um, or is the pig just you know the runt of the group and doesn't get uh, doesn't get as good access to feed because the other pigs pick on them. Um, you know th these are all things to 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 be able to easily keep track of if you can identify your pigs. Now if you can identify them without a tag, then I say go for it. By all means, do that. Don't use a tag for as long as you can, so that way you have a lower probability of that tag getting ripped off um, or falling off. Uh, before you go to the processor and then you have to unfortunately the, the pig has to live through that experience a second time which again very minor it's uh, it happens for a second and then that's it they they barely notice it and they don't they only I, I all 11 pigs that were tagged uh, this with this applicator didn't even see any bleeding so um, <clears throat> and that's it's another thing about location on the ear what I was looking for is I'm looking for a lower part of the ear and I'm and I'm looking I'm feeling for veins too by the way you want to feel and make sure you don't catch a vein they have veins in their ears and they're usually they'll protrude out and you can feel them pretty good so just just avoid that spot and then you shouldn't have any bleeding at all 
and you want to make sure it's in a good um, lower a lower part of the ear not too deep in the ear because you don't want to bother in there uh, in the inner ear area you just want it to be low enough to where it's not hanging off the end on the tips of their ears and you want to make sure that you're not hitting a vein and you're getting into a good cartilage area where it's going to hold good so it's not too terribly it's not really rocket science you just want to have it kind of in the the lower third of the ear but on the you know outer i guess the top end of the lower third of the ear and um, and then feel and make sure you're um, not going to hit a vein that's why um, i did it without gloves on i didn't have any gloves on so i could feel what was going on and i had good full dexterity um, so that way i didn't nick a vein and make them bleed so anyways folks um, that's just uh, my review on the Ytex applicator and a few thoughts on tagging, um, why to tag, when to tag, how to tag, and um, <clears throat> until the next time, I guess uh, we'll see you folks later. I got, I got a bull calf over here just drooling because he really wants his sweet feed, and Big Mama's doing the same thing too. Big Mama, you're drooly, aren't you? Yes, yes, are you? What are you, what are you up to, Charlie? You want to, okay, I'll bring you the sweet feed. I'll quit messing around. A little quick update on our ducklings. They have grown pretty quick and they are just ridiculous looking because they, they, they really don't have any feathers, but they're just about like full duck size if they were any other breed besides like a white peak. And I mean, they are um, two months younger than that, that hen right there. Or actually, I think that might be a little rooster. They are like two months, yeah, that's a little rooster. <clears throat> Yeah, they're, they're a full two months younger than that chicken. That chicken's full feathered and growing out. These goofballs still have fluff on them. They're just giant. Um, that's why I like white pecans. Big old fluff balls. Anyhow, um, well, we hope to catch you folks next time. And until then, we'll see you all back at the ranch.